So I'm here with Martin Chinstad from Norway, and we're going to do a bit of a discussion on some of the questions different coaches have. Martin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for letting me join. Cool. Maybe talk about your sprint training quickly. How, how many sprint sessions do you have per week of training? And how, how long are your sprint durations? What are you doing to prepare for sprint races? Uh, I actually had uh, no no like proper sprint sessions with the uh, prologue qualifications uh, the whole year, uh, but I do quite a lot of those um, shorter speed sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I'd, I'd gone more from when I was younger. I did maybe eight to twelve seconds, but this year I've been focusing more to fifteen to thirty seconds. Maybe maybe take some of the speed a little bit down, but working more in the speed you're actually racing in when doing sprinting. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you've seen on the best sprinters in Norway, the main focus on training has actually been like the capacity building. And because the way sprinting has been the past five years in World Cup and also Norwegian Cup, it's, uh, it's not so much uh, about the... Um, highest speed it's more about the yeah, the the average speed in the whole uh, qualification or the whole um, quarterfinal or semifinal um, because it people are going fast from the start so my main focus has been to like build capacity but also remember to focus on the shorter speed session so not all my training is slow and long but also some um, some faster so i try to have one one uh, with um, sh shorter sessions with skating and classics each week mm -hmm. and also in the summer training i do what we call spenced mm -hmm. it's like plyometrics or something mm -hmm. maybe in english yeah um to get like the yeah the, the like the, the maximum strength but also technical in right so it, that makes total sense what you're saying. Uh, with these sprint athletes, they're not just always training their sprint. They're also working on their long days to build a big aerobic foundation. Because yeah. as, as you touched on your sprint day, if you're you're doing your quarter final, semi final, plus your qualifier, it's that's a lot of racing. And what are your ideas for recovery between um, those heats and recovery between your your morning qualifier and and afternoon heats do you have advice um for athletes on that quick recovery um we actually had some studies in some universities here in norway and the findings are kind of like it doesn't matter so much what you do i think the kind of most important thing don't stress it get um uh, maybe do five to ten minutes easy jog after a qualification get some dry clothes, uh, dry socks especially. Uh, maybe try to dry your sh shoes or boots. Uh, mm -hmm. get, some, get some food or energy that you know your body works well with, if it's maybe uh, bananas or uh, just some slices of bread. And yeah, uh, and not, not stress it too much. Uh, know, know why you're there. Like, uh, to to get re relaxed and get the restitution going, but um, yeah, I th I, for for my part, I feel if I am stressing too much about it, I'm only thinking about it all the time. You just get relaxed, get the body, uh, the heart rate down, the acid a bit away, but the lactic acid it shows some both from my own experience and also that some studies here in Norway that. In sprint races, it doesn't actually have so much to say what you do. It might feel worse, but the performance isn't necessarily worse. Interesting. Do you want to touch on your, your yearly training volume? How many hours you're training per year? And yeah. what what is a, a small or recovery week look like you versus your high training volume week look like? Uh, yeah, uh, like uh, I, I had some weeks this uh, or periods this uh, summer and uh, fall where I've been training 
I had one week in September where I had 27 hours mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some were 25, 24 and also some that maybe 12, 10 days with high volumes. Um, but and then so that's like to and I, I can see that I have the higher volumes a week uh, maybe once or maximum twice a month mm. uh, so uh, and then uh, I also usually have one easier week uh, but I'm not as it's not really periodic it's more like what my body feels like so the easy week maybe I take one or two days off just no training uh, and uh, then I also try and just do sort of the normal training, but I cut maybe the three hours into one and a half. Mm -hmm. so, so my body gets back into the training, but I don't push like the hours. Uh, and, and also I feel if I go down on the volume, it's even more important to have those shorter uh, speed sessions to like get the body some, some, um, yeah, some skiing uh, at high fat, uh, speed. Uh, so I can see that uh, usually when I do a 25-ish week, I can follow the next week by maybe 12 to 13, 14 hours. Uh, and then I normally build up again to up to 20, maybe some more hard sessions. Mm -hmm. And then 25-ish again. Cool. Uh, but it's not like I have a plan that I go, uh, this week is only volume, this is just rest, and this is only uh, only hard. Uh, but I try to have quite like a steady training throughout the month, but of course with some periods with more volume and some periods with uh, more uh, hard sessions. And then of course it's important to have some easy periods also. Because the, the 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 rest is as important as the training, right? And it's that's cool that you're noting um, you're not not necessarily structuring your your training around different blocks, but more listening to how your body's feeling, knowing when you need to recover, and knowing when you're ready to do volume. That makes yeah, point. that has been a big learning for me the past couple of years because. Um, I was quite uh, fast some years as a junior, but then I had some, yeah, something, some virus that set me back, not Corona, uh, for like uh, 12, 18 months. So when I was building up from that, I had to start listening more to my body. Yeah. Uh, and that has been a big learning for me uh, last year that I've also developed further this year. Cool. And how many hours uh, will you be training this year or past years? And how does that compare to? most Norwegian athletes your age? Uh, I think last year I had 760, 70 or something. Mm -hmm. uh, really bad December with uh, the flu. But uh, this year I'm I'm around, I, I, have, I have 500 hours now from the 1st of May. Uh, but it will be around 800, I think, when the winter is gone. Nice. Uh, so maybe... Maybe a eight twenty if it's uh, yeah if my shape is good in uh, April and the weather is nice. <laughs> How does that compare to other um, Norwegian athletes? Well, we have some athletes that trains a lot, and we also have some that trains not as much. But as I feel most like um, top skiers in Norway for them. You can see that the, all the most of the sprinters they do, or guys that are best in sprint, do maybe 750 to 850, mm -hmm. and it looks like maybe 800 to 950 is more what uh, where you can find mo most of the distance guys. But of course, you have someone like uh, can do 1,000 maybe 1,100 hours, but they are usually on the national team and they have like all the things around so they only need to focus on the training right. but you can see most skiers is yeah, 800 to 9 hours i think you find a lot of norwegian skiers and what are, what are your main training types uh between roller skiing running cycling what what type of modes do you use for your training <laughs> uh for 
for, for myself, I, I don't cycle because, or I do it like in the gym for warm up, but uh, I'm not a good biker, so I don't feel like I can use it as a big part of my training. Mm -hmm. uh, so for myself, I focus a lot of running, uh, and you're seeing quite so much focus on running in Norwegian skiing the past past years, uh, with Therese Johar being maybe the best. Uh, almost uh, no matter no matter uh, sex, but uh, you can also, and that's also more what the really good period of Norwegian skiing did in in the nineties. So this year I'm aiming about two hundred and fifty hours of running. Mm -hmm. uh, last year I had uh, one hundred eighty ninety, so I've been focusing more on running both on uh, hard sessions and particularly on the longer session this year. Cool. And I can have a short look at my training diary and I can see that I have uh, 140 hours so far with the classic in both roller skiing and snow mm -hmm. and 125, 130 in skating. So even split. About, about the same in skating and classics. Cool. All right. Well, thanks very much, Martin, for all those uh, answers. It's great having you on. No problem.